It's just about six, right? About six o'clock. Six o'clock too. Okay, well, uh, I'm going to call the Milton Common special meeting of the Milton Common Council for Wednesday, November 15th, 2017, to order. And the first uh, item is roll call. Here. Sullivan. Here. Patrick. Here. Ramsey. Here. 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 Teal. Here. Burke. Wow, that's good. So the first item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from November 8th, 2017. Move approval. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor of uh, approving the minutes of November 8th, 2017, <coughs> say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? So the motion passes. We'll leave a little more time for the phone delay. I will. I will. Thank you. Okay, so the next item is the budget, 2018 budget deliberations. So who wants to start? Well, any statements or recaps or anything? Don't really have anything uh, to add at, at this point. Uh, the information that's in your packet reflects the budget with the changes that were approved by the council at the prior special council meeting. Uh, we did uh, receive one uh, email regarding a potential budget amendment for consideration this evening. Um, I emailed that out uh, to the council and to the staff. And uh, my understanding is that would be to uh, keep the hotel room tax at 7% rather than 8%. That would reduce revenue estimates in the general fund by 60000 and in the tourism fund by 200000 And the proposal for the general fund, as I understand it, was to remove the sustainability coordinator position for 25000 and reduce the general contingency by 35000 Yes, sir. So I would speak to the uh, version that came out of finance with the modifications we made last week. Um, I think we did a, a nice job putting in the personnel that we had to put in place. And I think that just kind of catches us up. It really just allows us to tread water. The sustainability position is a game changer. It's, the, it's really looking forward to how we can improve the city in innovative ways that we just don't have the capacity to today. We've been looking at purchasing, which is an opportunity. We've been looking, the, the mayor actually did a lot of research on roads and different materials that can be used in roads that might be more sustainable. We just don't have the capacity right now to look at those things. And also, and as Elizabeth points out to us and very um, intelligently points out, climate will be an issue that we will have to address. And we need to have someone on our staff that's starting to look at those long-range activities that really are going to speak to how we have to be as, as a city in the future. This is a game changer, and I think if we don't start making investments in how a city, how Middleton in the future is going to look, we are only going to continue to tread water. So I would ask for support for the version that came out of finance and that was amended last week. Is that a motion, Joanna? Or sure, you just I'll make that motion. Statement? I'll second. Second. So I, you know what, <laughs> I would just like to make some com general comments. Um, again, budgets are a series of choices. Um, I think it was foolhardy of us to say let's increase the tourism tax by a point when there's no need for tourism to have that. The only reason why everyone jumped on this was to. to pick up that 60 grand in funding. It's the wrong way to go about getting additional sources of funding. Just plain and simple. Tourism does not have a need for it, potentially won't have a need for it till sometime in the future. So just on the face of it, the f saying that we're going to jump on tourism to, to fund shortfalls in the general fund is the wrong approach to budgeting. Every year we have this discussion about what positions we want and which positions that we need. I think obviously um, the, the positions that were approved 
um, <coughs> not necessarily approved, but, but seem to be prioritized from, I think, as a general consensus, were the, the IT technician, the changes in finance, the full-time police officer, and then really, I think it, it becomes really what the, the crux of this decision is, is how do we prioritize the following three, which is the, the street crew member, the additional changes to um, the youth center, and the sustainability position. And quite honestly, I would rank the street crew member and the youth positions higher than the sustainability position. And that's why I submitted that amendment was to fund those issues because those take care of the needs above the wants. Every single year for the last five years, we've argued about adding heads. And quite honestly, raising taxes on tourism is the wrong way to get to plug holes in the general fund. And the plain and simple, it's a bad budget choice. We shouldn't be raising taxes for tourism at all for the sake of the general fund. And that was the source of funds to, to take care of all of these positions, or a big piece of it. So I think it would be better if we said, you know what, this was a want that we could not fund because of our existing sources of funds, and we will pick it up again next year and put that discussion in place next year. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Joanna. I appreciate those comments, um, Mark, but it is about choices. And the voters last year told us the choices. And one of the biggest outcries was that we have to do something as a city for climate change, and we need to listen to our voters. And that was in an, a November election, a presidential year, that people were telling us these are the choices they want to make. The tourism tax is a harmless tax. It doesn't, it doesn't uh, address me. I don't pay that room tax. It's people that visit our community. And it's still competitive with the market. It's still competitive with what Madison will charge. And if you go on whatever app you want to go on to get your hotel room, they don't tell you the tourism tax. They just tell you the room tax, the, the room fee. And then when you get there, they'll add on the, the tax. So it's not going to harm people coming into Middleton as well. So I think it's a harmless tax for our community, and it is about making choices. But some choices were foisted on us by the legislature and others. So we're using the best tools we have to get the funds that really speak to the needs of this community. And I would maintain that the voters in 2016 told us what they thought were important needs as well. And I would argue that there is no such thing as a harmless tax. Okay, just because it doesn't impact a citizen of middle. Well, I think directly. if you went out and asked people about whether they would act, want I, someone may from I finish, please? out of state to may pay I finish, or please? me, I would say out of state. It is irresponsible of this committee to vote to increase tourism taxes just so that we can plug a hole in the general fund. Is just irresponsible from a from a budgeting perspective, from a management perspective, from an oversight perspective. We are bad alders if we do that, right? In your opinion. In my opinion, you're correct. <clears throat> the fact that the citizens said that they want these sustainability uh, options to start happening does not require a new position. We are not enjoined from doing many of the things that the sustainability initiatives are requesting. The only thing that hasn't happened is that we've put a head count on, a partial head count on. Okay? It is not a requirement for the city to put on additional head count to move forward with sustainability issues. And that's, I think, part of the, the, the choice here, is that it is not a requirement the other items, the other positions that are, are being proposed, I think for the most part, in my opinion, are m much more aligned to what is required than what is wanted. And that's the issue, is that we don't have the funding source within the general fund. We're grasping at straws to be able to, to 
reach to get a sustainability position or, or you know what it's not even a sustainability somebody needs to say okay you know what i value sustainability above the, the youth center i'm not willing to do that somebody can say that i value sustainability over the street crew member i'm not willing to do that someone could say i'm willing to, to prioritize the, the sustainability position over police officer and i'm not willing to do that i think everybody should sit back and think what is the real needs of the city as opposed to what is a want? And that's really what it comes down to. I have, um, yes. I have two thoughts. The first one being, I don't know that it's a harmless tax, um, just because based on, I think Van was the one last meeting mentioned, when you're looking at the money makers for hotels, it's events. And when you're looking at event planning, you're considering that sales tax. And if you're saying Verona or DeForest has lower sales tax, then they are going to get those large events, and they, that's what boosts our economy. So that's just my first thought. So I don't think it's, it's, a, it's not a harmless tax. It, it will affect the economy, possibly. Um, my other thought, though, um, if you like that first one, I know you won't like my second one, but this is something I, I emailed to Mike Abbey, um, and I... <laughs> I would like to discuss the possibility of tourism um, funding an ecotourism sustainability position out of um, money that tourism apparently still ha they have left over funds there. I know um, it may or may not fit in statute. My reading the statute is that it might, but it might not fit with the current projects for what sustainability wants to do. But I think um, we do a lot of sustainability here in Middleton, and ecotourism, sustainable tourism, is something that is driving um, a lot of tourism globally. So it's just a way to think about the position differently. Does anybody want to comment on Julie or? Uh, Abby had a very eloquent email about why that wouldn't work, and you are welcome to address that. But <laughs> um, well, I don't know the tourism statutes like I'm sure Julie and Van and others do. But um, my thought was that an ecotourism position would would be in place to promote things that we've already done. Um, like, you know, having tours, like you mentioned, of our shared solar project, things like that, whereas the sustainability coordinator position would actually be doing projects to put Middleton on the map, map to make us a leader in sustainability. And I was telling Mike earlier, you know, we've applied for a few sustainability awards as a municipality, and we've won most of the awards that we've applied for, but I'm not putting any time and effort into tooting our horn, so to speak, anymore, because there's, there's such a limited amount of staff time that I have to devote to sustainability initiatives, and there's such a backlog of things that we really need to be doing if we really want to be a leader. Um, some of the projects that we would hope that the coordinator could take on are things like curbside compost collection, which could end up being a win-win um, from an economic standpoint as well as a, a sustainability standpoint if we can get somebody who has time to devote to figuring out a way that we can do curbside compost that would allow the city to only collect trash bi-weekly. And that's going to be difficult because we have to get all of the smelly stuff out of the trash to be able to do that. And it's going to take a lot of work to find a place where we can take the compost. But that's a project that time and time again we have heard from the residents that they want it. We did a survey in 2016, we had 500 responses and 81% of the people who responded said that they want the city to implement curbside compost collection. You know, you look at it overall, it could end up meaning that our contract for trash, trash and recycling collection costs the city a lot less money and ends up costing taxpayers less money. Um, that's one big project that I would like this position to be focused on. Some other projects that I know that we've been kicking around are ideas to have solar on all of our city-owned buildings. Um, and it might be, there might be an opportunity for the city to partner with nonprofits and also um, possibly the school district. And we've already heard of two nonprofits that are interested and the school district's interested. Again, these projects take a lot of time and they take a lot of coordination. And with my other duties, I just don't have the dedicated time to devote to these bigger projects that require a lot of re research and, and staff time. So my hope is that you'll keep the sustainability coordinator position in the budget. I think that there are really some opportunities that could lead to savings in the long term, um, you know, if it's the money that you're looking at. But also, like Joanna mentioned, you know, the voters 
spoke in the referendum by you know 81% of them voting that they wanted Middleton to be a leader. To me, we don't really have anything yet in Middleton that's cutting edge enough that is going to lead to a lot of ecotourism in our community. We're just not there yet. But we could be. We've got some big projects and some big ideas. Um, we just we we just don't have the staff time or resources to really make us a leader in this field. So my hope is that you'll keep it in. I would just say my argument is when you look up ecotourism, sustainable tourism in relation to government, one of the core foundations of the definition is the development of programs. And so if you're looking at putting a tourism a position in tourism, you're looking at the development of programs to create ecotourism, not the promotion of it. That's, that's all I was trying to get at. So Julie, you want to, uh, don't want to put you on the spot. Do you want to say anything? As it relates to the development, Elizabeth, we're generally taking the lead from the Department of Tourism and things that we're doing on a national, international, and state and local. So an example of that would be Think Green, which was an initiative that um, I think was initiated several years ago. Um, various things, various criteria that were associated with that, but that was initiated by the Department of Tourism. I really applaud your creative thinking on how to try to get this, this staffing to be um, a little more aligned with each other, but they really are two totally different positions. Yeah. Yeah, uh, my point at the last meeting regarding the room tax wasn't to tell you how to spend money. It was just to say that it was, it was a, a pro being done differently than a normal process would be done. It's not going to kill tourism if the room tax is raised 8%. It's money that we don't need, but it's not going to kill tourism. Um, and we really have one facility in town that it might make some difference to at some point in time. It, it isn't the end of the world, though. It isn't, you know, the sky's not going to fall because it's 8% at the Marriott, which is you know, the third largest convention space in the county. Um, and the, we, just, we do slow the gap with Madison. So th this isn't, it isn't about not spending it, it's just that it isn't necessary for us, but it, it's not gonna hurt. And if those funds you know, are, are legitimately needed somewhere else, by all means, you have to use every, every funding mechanism you have uh, to be able to pull it off. So I just wanted to be really clear that I wasn't saying don't spend, was saying it's just a different way to do the process. And this is it. We, I guess we can't go any higher in room tax. So this is, this is the one shot you have to, to do it now. Next year, it's just part of the general fund. So um, I just wanted to clarify that. So and I, I would just add that from my perspective, I would love the opportunity to have a more strategic dialogue with the council on how we would address these additional funds that tourism has. Because you all keep reminding me that we have a substantial fund balance that we need to be doing something with. So as Van so eloquently stated last week, this is probably just going to drop down <coughs> into that fund balance. So is there any way for both of you that you could fund uh, anything in ecotourism or anything related to sustainability? Okay. No. Okay. Um, not at this point, and I'm going to be involved in a brainstorming session tomorrow with a gentleman that does destination experiences mm -hmm. for um, communities, and there may be something mm -hmm. that arises out of that. And I, in the email response that I sent to Elizabeth today, I said, I really appreciate the, appreciate the collaboration that um, the city and the, the city development team has with tourism. Being part of these weekly meetings often gets me ahead of the curve on some of the things that are in the pipeline and we can start planning for how we're going to market some of these things. So this might be an opportunity for me to reciprocate with my colleagues. Okay, thank you. Howard? It's, it's, a, it's a catalyst. You know the discussion. It's a catalyst, but it's certainly not anything that is that, that can happen. You know, like that. You know, the discussion has to evolve over a period of time. There are a number of other commissioners that would be involved. A number of properties involved in that discussion. So, so when I just said no, it isn't. It isn't. Oh well, you've got this money now. Make it work this way. It's well, yeah. There's this extra money now. We'll take some time to figure out how and what to do something. Correctly with it, rather than just 
try to quickly find some use for it. That's how I envision the commission moving anyway. Thank you. Howard? Julie, did I hear you say that the laws are changing? <laughs> the legislature changed the uh, tax laws? I'm sorry? I thought I heard you say the laws are changing. Um, On? Change the tourism laws? In terms of this is our how the room tax is applied? I'm just curious. There was a change uh, two or three years ago, Howard. Yeah, but I mean, they're not changing it in a future. But it didn't, it didn't affect us. No, it, no, it did not. I agree with you. It's still 70-30, and the rules. Oh, there's an 8% cap, Howard. There's an 8% cap on raising a room tax. And then the next step has to be toward tourism development. Does that make sense? No, it doesn't. Say that, Say that again. There's an 8% cap, according to the state statute, on raising the room tax. Oh, nobody and so it. right now, um, as an example, Madison raised the room tax 1%, but the majority of that is going into tourism marketing, which is um, filling a shortfall in the gap between the, the contract with the city and the Convention and Visitors Bureau. And they're also applying that to other local events. So I think that's what Van was, was referencing when he said this is the, the last chance. Yeah. The, next, the next time we do it, yeah. I'm trying to understand, is the state law such that you cannot raise the tourism, the tourism tax above 8%? Without, without having it go into some sort of tourism development project or be applied to tourism marketing. So they did change the rules that underline the tourism tax. So would it be correct to say that the since I've only in been, been in this position, I just can I just clarify? Since I've only been in this position one year, I'm not really familiar with what the past was, but I would be happy to investigate that and get back to you. I dealt with this 20 years ago, same darn thing. I you can probably tell me. <laughs> no, I can't, I haven't kept up with it. I'm curious is that I haven't seen any announcement anywhere that there's any change in the laws. Bill, do you? Have the, it not, this isn't a change in the law, but something that has been in place in the law is that um, a tax, a room tax that's imposed may not exceed 8% unless there was a room tax in place prior to June 1, 1994. So the city of Madison had a room tax prior to that. They're not subject to that provision. But for Middleton and other cities that had their room tax imposed after that date, the maximum rate is 8%. And that was what was put in place two or three years ago. So it is the law that you cannot raise the room tax above 8%. That's what I'm trying correct. to get at. For the city of Middleton, that's correct. So Thank you, Bill. raise the room tax above 8%. Correct. I have a couple other questions. Um, what's, Bill, what's the fun, uh, Tourism Commission's fund balance? This, this argument, this discussion really doesn't involve a whole lot of tourism other than they're the source funding. Uh, should be to sustainability and the types of things that they are doing and the reasons behind their requesting this kind of a, a range. That's right after that. I'm just curious though, I ask this every the once resolution. in a while, what's the tourism, tourism fund balance? It's approximately $2 million. Uh, the, the sheet right after the uh, resolution in the packet um, that's labeled all funds summary, for each fund that shows the January 1 uh, projected balance, um, estimated revenues, expenditures, and then the projected balance at the end of 2018. So we're projecting at the beginning of uh, January 1, 2018, the fund balance for tourism would be uh, 1,848,325. That'll vary somewhat depending on where we end up, but just under $2 million. I understand that substantial out of money. That, that, that ends that question that more for public consumption than anything else. Um, what what staffing does the city provide for the uh, sustainability commission? We don't have a dedicated staff, but as you know, Abby is our lead staff person, and she fits sustainability within her position of committee, a director of community development, and that's sp specifically within her position description. If you want to know how how she divides her time, is that what you're asking? I um, might go there. How do you divide your to, time? I'm trying to understand. Do you, do you have an where, idea, I'm, Mike? I'm trying to understand where all of the where the need is 
for staffing or sustainability. And then I'm going to ask a couple questions about what kinds of projects are pushing that need. So if I can understand how many people are currently at the city, from the city, staffing that and about how much time is spent on that, it'll tell me what I need to ask my next question. I would estimate that I probably spend about 20 or 25 percent of my time on sustainability initiatives right now. Um, compared to other communities, we're, we are very low. PD says that that's what you should be spending? I don't think my PD is, that's, is that um, prescriptive, but that is one of many things within my position description. Whatever gets tossed on your plate. Well, I staff seven committees for the city, and sustainability is one. What's but it, but it, but sustainability takes up more of my time than, say, the Arts Commission or the Community Development Authority, not as much as Plan Commission, um, significantly more than Landmarks Commission. You know, I mean, it just it sort of depends on the week and what the projects are. But it, we are very low compared to other communities. Um, Fitchburg has a three quarters time sustainability coordinator position. And they also have an environmental engineer position. And a majority of that position is directly related to the same types of things that we work on for sustainability here. Um, Monona has a full-time sustainability position. The way I would envision this position is that it would not take on any of the duties that I am doing right now. I would continue to staff the sustainability committee, um, the Dane County Climate Council, Green Tier Legacy Communities, along with their energy task force that I'm a member of. Um, I would continue to uh, oversee the policy development for the Middleton Recycling Center and the water conservation programs that the city has initiated. This position would strictly be working on projects. And these are projects that the committee and residents of Middleton have been asking for time and time and time again. Right now, we are in a situation where you know we'll find out about a grant opportunity that arises, and I'm scrambling around in the evenings to try to put together an application because with my other duties with the city, I just don't have the time. So if we had this position, which it looks like it would be you know a 15 or 20 hour a week position, we could ensure that we're protecting this person's time, that they're not, their time is not being usurped by meetings and phone calls and people stopping in to the zoning counter and those kinds of things. This position would strictly be trying to move these bigger projects and initiatives forward. And like I mentioned, I think number one would be curbside compost collection, at least from my perspective, and I think a lot of the sustainability committee members would agree because we hear that all the time from people asking us why we don't have it. Um, and then number two would probably be the large scale solar project, but we've got lots of other projects. Madison tried the curbside. How'd that work out? Their issue in Madison is that they don't have a place to take the material. And so that's where I would see this being a, a big initiative that could possibly be pushed through this Dane County Climate Council, which I am now a member of to actually coordinate with other communities and go in on a biodigester possibly. I mean, it could be a really... You can't put stuff like that in a biodigester. Yeah, you can. That's where Madison's... Well, Madison... The problem they ran into, they found out they couldn't do it. Well, no, they can, but they, they ran into an issue with contamination with plastic. So it was a very specific issue that was coming out of American Family Insurance. So, I mean, there, there's a lot of thought that needs to be put into these things. There are ways to make it work, and there, you know, these are bigger initiatives that I think that our residents would appreciate. There's somewhere a list of ideas and projects and thoughts you that sustainability is thinking about doing. I'm trying to, trying to get a grasp on how, how they am doing their, how they're coming up with projects and yeah. how, how their time is being spent. Right. What are they trying to think about doing? I mean, I'm not saying that they're good, they're bad. I'm just trying to understand. Well, we have position be due besides figure out a curbside pickup, and um, the other one is solar buildings. Which, gosh, we you've done such a wonderful job. I don't know why we'd want to get rid of you. Well, we have a sustainability plan in place. It was adopted in 2010. 
and we've completed 67% of the projects in the plan, but we have 33% of those projects that still need to be done, and we have much, much more ambitious goals in mind now. I think we've come a long way already with you know the work that's been done by the committee, but you know, think really big. What about making Middleton net zero energy? I mean, let's think about getting to 100% of our municipal energy needs from renewable resources. Let's think about how we might be able to convert some of our city vehicles to run on compressed natural gas. We have done none of that. We don't have a single hybrid or electric vehicle on our city fleet. So, I mean, when you look at what we could do, we are, we're, there's a lot that we could yet do. I mean, Madison is putting a plan in place where they're talking about getting to 100% net zero energy, not just for their municipal operations, but citywide, the whole city. I mean, they're, we're, we're not even to that level of even contemplating trying to get there yet. But I think that this position would be a small step in, in the right direction to help, uh, help you know, really make Middleton a leader. Thank you. Any other? Oh. Who is this? Susan. Susan. Yes, Susan. Go ahead. Okay, I'm having trouble hearing everyone. So can you hear me? Yes. Yes, yes we can. Okay. I would like to ask, how long has it been since we've raised the tourism tax? Well, do you know? It was three years ago? I think it was probably about 10 years ago. It's been a long time. Okay. It's been, it's been a long time. I'm looking at, if it was 10 years ago, I'm looking at this as the tourism tax is to support basic city services that are used by people, uh, by tourists. And in that regard, it's time we should probably have tourists supporting more basic city services. The same as we did a couple of years ago when we started taking money from the TIF district to support police, fire, EMS, roads, and so on, and trying to connect a specific job to the tourism tax, I'm having a little bit of trouble with. Uh, the sustainability position I'm completely in, for, in favor of, but I see it just coming out of our general fund balance like any other position. I think, uh, by I the think way, I it's 30, 70, yes, how many percent, 30 percent goes to tourism, 70 percent, no, so the way around, around 70 percent right? to tourism, 30 percent to to of the city, and the city's 30 percent goes in the bucket, right? I, I think what, right. 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 I think what Susan's right. coming to is that the marginal increase in, in funds is essentially paying for either one or two of these positions that's on the budget list. That's what we're talking about. That's what she's talking about. And she's objecting to that tourism <coughs> paying for that, that it should be, that the, that the general fund should be paying for the basic needs of the city and not these incremental wants. Well, you swap it out, so it's the same I, thing. I, I think that's what, that was her point. Let's ask her what her, her point was. Susan? Yes? So what was your point? Did you hear what Mark said? I didn't hear, I can't hear anything that anyone's saying or very little of it. Oh. Were you saying we should keep the tourism tax or we should not keep the tourism tax? We should keep the tourism tax. 8%. Okay. And what are you willing to pay, fund with that? Is it going to, so here we have this, again, we keep going back to these basic discussions. So Mike, I'll ask you, every year for the last couple of years, we've asked you to rank the, the needs of the city in terms of headcount. Is this sustainability position even on your radar? Absolutely it is. Where is it in terms of ranking <clears throat> when we, with respect to it Sean's? Would have, of of this list minute. that you? We have, Sean has how many, how many positions that he has gone, has, has gone unfilled for the last three years? Matt has how many positions that have gone unfilled for the last few years? Chief has, <clears throat> What, three positions, three police officer positions that have gone unfilled for the last three or four years? So 
in terms of what's more important to the city, is it this one sustainability position or is it the other positions, right? The library is here. How many times have we heard from library that they need more staff? How many times have we heard from Rebecca that recreation needs more staff? And that's the, the gist of this discussion is what's more important here? Do we want to put more boots on the ground where we've got to find needs or are we willing to take a flyer on this position in the hopes that somehow it'll it'll do something for the city. Again, it's a basic choice: is do we fund what our needs are, or are these aspirational? Sorry, I, I'm sorry. There's no question. I'm not sure in if that was a rhetorical question, yes. or if you were really asking me a question. Well, I'll, I'll, <laughs> what's your opinion, right? How do you rank the, the the sustainability position in the midst of all these other requirements that the city staff have? Well, I, th I think it's important to note the sustainability, in, in my opinion, uh, underlies just about all of our operations. But he's speaking the mic. Okay, is this close enough? I don't want to be too close to be too loud. All right, I, I, I believe sustainability is underlying most city operations as an important function of the city. It is not law enforcement, so it doesn't put police officers on the street and it doesn't pick up your leaves or your brush uh, or do snow, snow removal. So those are distinct functions, but there is an underlying need for sustainability in all functions of city government. And that's why uh, we have cultivated that through Abby's leadership, through the sustainability committee's leadership. And I've been with them every step of the way in trying to find ways that we save money, we save energy, we do things more effectively and efficiently. And to me, that is sustainability. So to say which one is more important than the rest, I think they're all very important. And I think the youth center is very important as well. So yeah, I okay. want to have my cake and eat it too. So Mike, here you have one dollar. I have to choose. You one have one dollar to spend. Right. Who are, you gonna, have, who are you going to spend it on? You're I would have had it in the order that you selected, and the part-time sustainability coordinator would be within the dollar amount that you have right now. I gave you one dollar to spend, and you have a choice between curve. spending it on the after-school programs, children's center, or sustainability. Where are you going to spend your dollar? Yeah, I wonder how many of you would answer that. I I would think the youth center is uh, what the way we're trying to address the youth center is to keep critical staff to fund it. And we won't have those critical staff for long to fund something that is very important to our community, youth that fall through the gaps. So yeah, we have a lot of pent up needs and demands of the city that we haven't funded over the last several years. I thought last week you took a great initiative in trying to put them all together and find a way that we could address all of these significant positions. Yes, we'll still have the need for a new police officer a year from now. We'll still have the need for public lands crew and public works crew too. But you funded two of those, the police and street crew, through this budget as it stands now. And I think you should fund a part-time sustainability coordinator as well as the youth center position so that we can continue to fund that operation. So I, I thought the council took a great step last week in finding a way to address all of those needs. And I support where you were last week and what Joanna was indicating as a motion to approve the Mike, I'm going to have to leave in a few minutes. Okay, so do we want uh, to take a vote on this one then? Um, are there any other comments? Um, if, if you're talking about a vote, I want to roll call. Oh, okay, okay. But Dan, I think do you have something? Mr. Ramsey had his hand up. Could uh, could you just, uh, Bill, give me a, a rundown of what um, both scenarios do to the contingency fund? Susan, could you please wait just a few minutes? Yeah, just I can wait about three or four minutes, and then I'll have to go. 
the budget as coming out of the special council meeting last week would have the city's general contingency at one hundred and forty four thousand dollars that's two-thirds of one percent of the general fund budget and that's consistent with the target that the city identified in its fund balance policy uh, which was adopted earlier this year that's a target that's not a requirement it was just trying to put a, a starting point in place of, of a level that we wanted to be at um, under the proposed amendment, uh, it would reduce the general contingency by $35,000 to $109,000, and that would put it at uh, just over half a percent of the general fund budget. Any other questions? The motion okay. is approval of the budget. Yeah. Right? Okay. The motion is the approval of the budget as it was discussed by the Finance Committee. Oh. Last city council week. at the last meeting. Last week. The council's That's meeting last week. Council's meeting at last week. So let's so let's have a roll call vote. So so the saying yes would be keeping the budget as it was approved by the city council, and voting no will be asking more or less saying that let's uh, lower the hotel room tax to seven percent. Okay, Robert and Susan, did you hear that? So a yes vote is for keeping the room tax. A yes vote is for the budget as it was presented tonight and voted upon by the council last week, right? Yep. Correct. Yep. And that would keep the room tax an yes. increase. 8% room tax. Yes. Yes. And Robert? I understand, yes. Olson? Oh, you are, should are probably they, call the roll call roll then. Call I don't vote. think that. Oh, I'm they sorry. The these are uh, yes, you're right. Okay, the roll call vote. So you both understand what the question is now. The vote. Yes. Are you voting uh, yes or no, Robert Burke? Yeah. Susan West. Yes. Kathy Olson. Yes. Mark Sullivan. No. Elizabeth Hetrick. Yes. Dan Ramsey? Yes. Joanna Richard? Yes. And Howard Teal? Nope. I think that's we'll six. Take care of the rest of them. Okay. Six. That settles the issue. Six in favor, two opposed. Is that correct? Okay. Yep. So we keep the budget as it is. So now we have the resolutions. And uh, the first resolution is 2017-42, uh, approving the 2018 budget for all city funds. I'll move approval. Second. Any discussion? Okay, so all those in favor of this motion say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Aye. Aye. Okay. Which one did Burke go? Susan, are you still on the line? I think Susan left after that vote. Okay, so it's. You need to confirm what Robert's I vote was yeah. because of the time. I apologize. That was too Robert? Yes. Yeah. Were you voting in favor of the budget for all city funds? Resolution 2017. Yeah. Okay. 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 Thank you. All right. 6-1. 6-1. 6-1. Six. Six one. One. Mark Susan. voted aye uh, oh, against. Susan's not there. Right. right. Okay. So the next one is uh, resolution 2017-43. Approving the levying of the property taxes for 2017 tax year for the city of Milton. Over for all. Second. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor of this motion say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Aye. Okay. So the motion passes 61. Well, uh, I need a motion to move it. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 So the aye. City Council is adjourned. Thank you, everyone. It's the last time I'm going to go out of my way to do this. The nice pleasure.